When we run our class, we run the method public static void main string square bracket args. I drew a box for all the local variables inside the main method, and I labeled it with the name of the method main. Our code creates three primitive variables, x, y, and z. x is a variable of type int, which means it stores numbers without a decimal point, or integers. We represent it as a pocket that can hold a number, and x stores the value 3. y is a variable of type double, which means it stores numbers with a decimal point. It takes more space in the computer to store double, so we represent that with a bigger pocket. And y stores the value 3.14. z is a variable of type boolean, which means it stores either a true or a false, and we represent it as a switch because on and off are like true and false and z stores the value false. There are five other primitive types, float, car, byte, short, and long, and all other variables that aren't primitive variables are reference variables. All primitive types start with a lowercase letter, and by convention, reference types start with a capital letter. Later, we'll learn more about arrays, which are also a reference type with a slightly different syntax. Our code creates two reference variables, s and d. s is a variable of type string, which means it can store a reference to a string object. s stores a reference to the string hello. That is, s keeps track of the string hello. d is a variable of type dog, which means it can store a reference to a dog object. d stores a reference to a dog object. That is, D keeps track of our newly created dog object. The big idea here is that primitive variables always store their value directly in the variable. In contrast, reference variables always store a reference to an object, or later in the course, an array.